This is the Evo 16, a 24 in, 24 out audio interface that is loaded with features. We have eight great sounding mic line inputs and the two on the front can be set to instrument level. You have eight line outputs, two optical inputs and outputs that can be set to ADAT or SPDIF, two independent headphone outputs, 48 volt phantom power applied to each channel individually. You got your smart gain, the motion UI screen, speaker switching, a programmable function button, the on-screen mixer app, loopback, and a ton more. So in this video, we'll go through everything, starting with unboxing to getting your drivers, seeing how to record, how to use loopback. We'll go through all of the features and functions so you can really become a pro at using the Evo 16. First, we'll start with the box. Feel free to pause to read further. Then we'll pop it open and see what's included. Here's your power cord and a USB-C to USB-A cable. There's your quick start guide and you can download the full manual from the website. Feel free to pause if you want to read all of this. And there's the interface. All right, so that's everything included in the box. You also have the option to mount the Evo 16 in a rack, but the rack ears are not included in the box. If you want to mount the Evo 16 in a rack, all you have to do is request a free pair of rack ears and they will be shipped to you. Once you get them, unpack the box and you'll need to remove these screws from both sides of the Evo 16. Then use the included screws to attach the rack ears to the unit. There we go. Then you'll want to remove the rubber feet from the bottom of the unit so it fits in with the other gear in your audio rack. And there you go. Slide the Evo 16 into your rack and screw it down. Now the rack screws are not included, so if you need some, I'll put links in the description below. Just make sure you get the right size for your rack. We're using 1032 here. All right, it looks good. The Evo 16 unit itself is very sturdy with an all metal chassis. There are four rubber feet on the bottom to keep the unit from sliding around. You'll also find the serial number on the bottom. On the front, you have two independent headphone outputs, a speaker button, a function button, which can be programmed for various options, the multifunction control wheel, which can be turned and clicked or pushed in, the motion UI screen, which displays various information like your meters, gain level, volume level, etc., and of course your settings page, an instrument button to set inputs one and or two to instrument level for guitar or bass, a 48 volt phantom power button, which can be switched on per channel. So that's pretty cool. And by the way, you can also control a lot of this stuff from the on-screen mixer as well. Your smart gain button, which we'll get into in a minute, the input buttons for each channel or input, and two mic, line, or instrument inputs here on the front. You can use XLR cables with these inputs for your microphones, and you have a 58 dB gain range from minus eight to plus 50. So that's enough gain for most microphones. However, if you are using broadcast style dynamic microphones, like the Shure SM7B, which needs around 60 to 70 dB of gain, and that's the mic I'm using right now, You'll probably want to have a cloud lifter type device on hand if you are using your broadcast dynamic mic for podcasting, voiceover, live streaming, or YouTube videos. And these mic preamps are very clean with a natural open sound and a bit of sweetness. 
You can also use quarter inch TRS cables with these inputs for your line level devices and quarter inch TS or instrument cables for your guitar or bass. To the rear of the unit, you have six mic line inputs and once again, a 58 dB gain range, the same mic preamps use XLR or quarter inch TRS cables. Again, these are mic line inputs for things like microphones, keyboards, other line level devices, and not instrument level. However, if you happen to have a guitar or bass with very high output active pickups, then you may be able to use these inputs on the rear as well for your guitar or bass. But in general, you'll want to use one of the dedicated JFET DI inputs on the front for your guitar or bass. Again, just switch it to instrument level. Then you have eight line outputs, and this is where you would connect your studio monitors and other outboard gear. You have two optical inputs and outputs that can be set to optical stereo SPDIF or eight channel ADAT. So you can add up to another 16 channels to the Evo 16, like with a couple external mic preamps, for example. Or of course, you could use your optical outputs for a digital headphone amp system or other outboard gear. You have a word clock output, the USB-C port, and the power cable connects here on the rear. Next, we'll get our drivers connected to the computer and power the Evo on for the first time. Head to this site and download the driver for your system. Even if you were on Mac, you'll want to download the driver so you can get the on-screen mixer. You should also download the full manual while you are here. Install your driver. There we go. Then plug the USB cable into the Evo and your computer. And I'm using a third-party USB-C to C cable and not the included USB-C to A cable because I have USB-C ports on my computer. I'll drop a link below to the exact USB-C cable that I'm using, but really it could be any quality USB-C cable. You'll also want to connect your studio monitors or at least some headphones to the Evo so you can hear what's playing through the Evo. Then connect the power cord and plug it in. Now your Evo 16 probably powered on automatically, but if it didn't, just press in on the control wheel. The first time your Evo 16 starts up, it will ask you to set the brightness and your function button. But you can always do this later by pressing in and holding the control wheel and adjust the settings. You can also set your F button from the mixer. There we go, we're all set up. You'll probably see this pop up on your computer and here we can register the unit and get our free software. You can also navigate directly to the website if you prefer. So create an account or sign in. I'll just sign in, go to your products, fill out all of your information. Again, you'll find the serial number on the bottom of the unit and register. Then you'll have access to the currently available software and plugins for free. But this software is not required. You can download everything or download nothing and the Evo 16 will still work exactly the same. On Windows, come down to your tray, right click on the Evo icon, and here you can set your loopback source, set your clock source, set sample rate, buffer, check for updates, and show the mixer. You'll also see many of the same controls within the mixer under setup. On Mac, you'll access this from the menu bar. Now, when you first connected your Evo 16, your computer probably automatically switched to using the Evo 16 as the computer sound system. You can leave it like it is or switch it back to the integrated output on Windows by clicking the speaker icon, expand, and switch it back to usually Realtek for Windows. You can also do the same thing on Mac.
Just understand that if you set the Evo as the sound system for your computer, you won't hear any computer-based audio like YouTube or a media player through speakers connected to your computer or through laptop speakers. So again, make sure you have headphones or speakers connected directly to the Evo 16. And also understand that you can have a different audio engine set for your computer sound and your DAW sound. So I could have Pro Tools set to use the Evo and Windows-based sounds like YouTube set to use speakers connected directly to the computer. The Evo Mixer allows you to set up your low latency monitor mix, set up cue mixes, activate things like talkback or mute, and even adjust the input gain. So let's take a quick overview of the mixer before getting into the specifics of the Evo 16. If I want to hear more of this mic in my headphones, I could raise this fader by plus six dB, and this boost does not affect the level going into the DAW. This is just for input monitoring purposes, so we don't hear any DAW-induced latency while you are speaking into a microphone, for example. You can pan, solo and mute, and this will affect what goes into your DAW. You can flip the phase, create a stereo pair, like for two matched microphones or maybe a synth. And this is also reflected on the Evo unit. You can name your channels, and you'll also see this name on the Evo. If you come to View and Show Mic Pre-Controls, you can even turn on Phantom Power per channel and adjust Input Gain. And of course, this will affect the level going into your DAW, and it will also be reflected on the unit itself. Over here, you can see your main mix and set up different cue mixes, which we'll get into later. You can also change the name of any of these mixes. You can show or hide the analog inputs, optical channels, and the DAW returns. You can also freely adjust the size of the mixer. Down here, you can activate talkback, sum to mono, switch speakers, dim, and cut or mute the output. You can assign a control to the F button by right clicking and assign. Of course, you can also do this from the unit itself. If you want to save your mixer settings to recall later, come to File, give it a name, and save. Recall it in the same way. Under Setup, you can change things like your buffer, sample rate, loopback source, etc. And these are the same controls you have from the Evo app in your tray. You can also store the standalone state of the mixer to the Evo if you want to use the Evo 16 without a computer. And these settings will be saved directly on the Evo. Come to Settings, and here we can set up our routing for all of our outputs. And by the way, if you want to route something out of a pair of physical outputs, just choose DAW through. So if you are feeding audio to external processors or maybe a headphone amp, you may want to choose DAW through. But feel free to play with this. There's really a lot you can do here in your routing, and we'll have some practical examples later on. Over here, you can set your talkback input source, and that can be an input on the Evo, or even an external source like a USB mic, or even a webcam mic. On the left side is where you set your ADAT or SPDIF for your optical inputs and outputs, set the clock source, set how mono mode works, whether it goes through one speaker or both, under trim settings, you can adjust how much the audio is dimmed or reduced when you activate dim. 
and you can boost or cut the alt speakers by 6 dB to balance them out with your main speakers. Before we move on to the specifics of how to use the Evo 16, let's look at the DAW channels in the mixer for a second so we can understand how the DAW returns work, and these channels refer to the outputs you have set in your DAW or other apps, but routing can affect them. If I set Studio 1 to output 1 and 2 on the Evo, you can see that in the Evo mixer, and hear it through the speakers plugged into the main outputs 1 and 2. If I set Windows to use output 3 and 4, then again you'll see that in the mixer in the DAW 3-4 track, and we'll hear it through the same speakers plugged into outputs 1 and 2, as long as we turn up that channel in the main mix. Those two uh, A and B layers. If I change Studio 1 to outputs 5 and 6, you can see that in the mixer, and we still hear our DAW through the speakers plugged into outputs 1 and 2. I could also plug monitors into output 3 and 4, then come to routing and switch 3 4 to DAW through. Now our Windows sound is routed directly to the monitors plugged into outputs 3 and 4 and through the DAW return 3 and 4 in our master mix. So we're hearing it through both sets of studio monitors at the same time. your production even further and then you don't have to redo. In that case, simply turn down or mute the 3 4 DAW return in our master mix. And now we only hear the Windows audio through the speakers plugged into outputs 3 and 4, and we control the volume exclusively within Windows. That you want. So it's a really cool way to generate something in Dark Horizon, and then, you know, maybe use it with uh, something else. Of course, you can still play your DAW audio through the speakers connected to outputs 1 and 2 at the same time. So, as you can see from that short example, the mixer and routing for the Evo 16 is very powerful and flexible. We'll do some more routing later on, but now let's dive into the specifics of how to use all of the features and functions of the Evo 16. What are you doing? Can you move so I can get this shot? Can, can you move? All right. To turn the Evo 16 off, press and hold the control wheel, select power, and yes. You can also press and hold the control wheel for about three to five seconds, and that will drop you right into the power off screen. To turn the Evo 16 on, press the control wheel. To adjust the LED brightness, press and hold the control wheel. To go to the settings page on the Motion UI screen, select brightness and adjust. To set what the function button does, press and hold the control wheel, select function button, and choose which function is assigned to the F button. Or from the mixer, right click the function you want to assign and choose F1. Also within the settings page, you can check the status and perform a factory reset. To see your input meters, press any of the input buttons and the screen will flip to your eight inputs. Press the control wheel to cycle through the digital inputs. To see your output meters, press any output button the screen will flip to the output meters. Again, press the control wheel to see the digital outputs. You'll also see meters when adjusting any input or output. To switch to instrument mode for guitar or bass, press channel one or two, then press the instrument button. You can also do this from the mixer, as long as you're showing the mic pre-controls. 
To manually adjust the input gain, select an input channel and turn the control wheel. You can also adjust the input gain from the mixer as long as you're showing the mic pre-controls. Smart Gain can set your input gain for you automatically in two proper levels in under 20 seconds. To use Smart Gain, first press the Smart Gain button, then select the channel or even multiple channels that you want to use. I have two mics connected, so I'll select channels three and five. Press the Smart Gain button again and talk, sing, or play an instrument into your microphones. Or of course, play your guitar or bass if you are using the instrument inputs. And make sure you play at a level that is representative of your performance. And that's it. The input gain will be set for you. If you want to manually adjust the gain up or down, just select the channel and turn the control knob. If you want to use smart gain across all eight channels at the same time, perhaps you're recording a drum kit with eight mics or even a live band with eight mics, press and hold the smart gain button until the channels stop blinking. Then press the smart gain button again and start playing drums or have the band play, etc. And the gain will be set for all eight inputs. Now that's pretty cool and a huge time saver. And by the way, if you ever want to cancel the smart gain process, just press the smart gain button or one of the output buttons. To turn on phantom power for your condenser microphones, or if you're using a cloud lifter type device, select the channel and press the 48 V button. You can also turn on phantom power from the mixer as long as you're showing the mic pre controls. And you can turn it off the same way. If you need a stereo input, perhaps for two matched microphones, an electric piano or synth, the output of a mixer or the output of another audio interface, then you can link your input channels by pressing them at the same time. You'll even see a chain link icon on the motion UI screen. Turn the control knob or use smart gain and the input gain will be matched on both channels. To unlink, simply press both buttons again. You can also do this from the mixer by toggling the mono stereo button. To increase or decrease the volume for your monitors, press the speaker button and turn the control wheel. To adjust the volume of either headphone output, press one of the headphone buttons and turn the control wheel. And by the way, if a button is already selected, you don't need to press it again. Just turn the control wheel. Also, the output volume will be affected by the level of the DAW return in the mixer. So if you crank the knob to 100 and the volume seems low, check the DAW channel in the mixer. And you can alt click to set it to the default. To quickly mute your speakers, press and hold the speaker button. Notice that the LED is blinking, telling us that the output is muted. To unmute, press and hold again. You can also mute the output by clicking the cut button in the mixer. To mute a headphone output, again, press and hold a headphone button. To mute an input, same thing, press and hold an input button, the LED will blink. Press and hold again to unmute. You can also solo and mute your input channels in the mixer. And you can solo or mute the DAW returns in the mixer. So if you crank the volume up and you don't hear anything, make sure that DAW channel isn't muted.
If you want to hear the same audio through multiple sets of speakers at the same time, we can do that. We have three sets of studio monitors. The big black pair is plugged into outputs one and two, the white pair into three and four, and the small black and blue pair into five and six. And by the way, it's always a good idea to label or color code your cables because it makes it much easier to find the correct device and the left and right side. I'll put some links below to the colored tape that you see here and for some vinyl tape if you prefer that. In the mixer, go to settings and set the routing for analog outputs one and two, three and four and five and six to main mix. Then, when you play back your DAW, the same audio is played through all six studio monitors at the same time. And you can adjust the volume for all six of them with the control knob. Now, if you don't have any studio monitors to use with your EVO 16, and you want something that's inexpensive but sounds good, then you might want to check out the Personas Eris E3.5 Studio Monitors. They'll only run you about $99 for the pair, and they sound really great for their size. We already have a full review video about the E3.5s, so I'll put that in the description below. If you want to quickly switch between two sets of studio monitors, we can use the Alt Speaker function. You can activate this from the mixer, or even assign it to the F button. I have the big black speakers plugged into line outs one and two, and the white speakers plugged into line outs three and four. In the mixer, come to settings and assign outputs one and two to main mix, and outputs three and four, which again is the white studio monitors, to alt speaker. I'll also bring up the trim setting since the black speakers are much louder than the white speakers. Then play back and we are hearing the black speakers. Switch to the alt speakers. And now we are just hearing the white speakers. And the volume knob controls both sets of studio monitors. Plus you can still mute. Now, what if you wanted to use a separate pair of speakers that's just for computer sounds, things like YouTube or a media player, for example, and you want these connected to the Evo and not your computer for some reason, but you also want to use two pairs of studio monitors for your DAW, one pair as the mains and one pair as the alt. No problem. We can do all of that with the Evo 16. I have the large black monitors plugged into outputs one and two, the white monitors into three and four, and the small desktop monitors into five and six. Then I need to set the output for windows to analog five and six, come to the mixer, settings, and route it like this. Outputs one and two, main mix, outputs three and four, alt, speaker and outputs five and six to DAW through. Now, before you do this, make sure you turn down the computer's output and the volume of the Evo, just in case. All right, we're all set, except for one more thing. I'll turn off the speakers plugged into outputs five and six. Now remember, these are the only ones we have set to play computer sounds. Then I'll play the video And we still hear it through our main speakers and the alt. Now, I don't want to hear my computer audio mixed with my DAW audio. So make sure you turn down or mute the 5.6 PC channel or DAW channel in the mixer. And there we go. Now we only hear our DAW through the main or alt speakers.
and all Windows sound comes through the desktop speakers plugged into five and six. The really cool thing about Crystalline is you can make a very small and the size volume is controlled exclusively volume within full customization of the sound that you want. I wanna be Just click and hold and drag to change the control. Tiny, medium, small, large, spacey. Then you have a sparkle. Now you could do this on Mac, but I really don't suggest it unless you have monitors with a volume knob. For Mac, it would just make more sense to connect your speakers directly to the computer. But if you want to do it anyway, here's what you'd need to do. Go to Audio MIDI Setup. Select the Evo 16. Configure speakers. Switch them to five and six. Select the Evo for your Mac sounds. Turn down the volume on your speakers because you can't do this directly from the Mac like we can in Windows, at least not yet. Set outputs five and six to DAW through. Play something like a video. Increase the volume. And there you go. Just like on Windows, make sure the 5.6 DAW return is turned down on the main mix. And your DAW will still play through your studio monitors. Another option would be to use a Q-Mix. And then you could adjust the volume for your Mac sounds with the mixer. Besides that, there's also the built-in width effect, which will give you the sense of a wall of sound, a double tracked guitar track, a completely produced guitar track. Again, I don't really recommend that you do this on Mac unless you buy an app that will give you the routing possibilities of Windows on your Mac. But in general, if you want separate speakers for computer sounds, again, remember, you can always play computer sounds through your main monitors if you don't mind it being mixed with your DAW audio. And that's usually how most people set things up. But if you want separate speakers for computer sounds, it would make more sense to connect your computer speakers to the computer. And the same thing really goes for Windows as well. But at least this exercise will give you some insight into how routing works and the difference between the audio system on Windows and Mac. Dim will reduce the output of your speakers. You can activate it from the mixer or assign it to the F button. Adjust the total amount of reduction from your settings. And there you go. You can check your mix in mono by using the mon button in the mixer or assign it to the F button. Now, something like Studio One actually has a mono button built in, but not every DAW does. So just click that mono button to check for phase issues and the balance of all of your tracks. You can also change the way this works in settings. Do you want to hear mono mode through one speaker or both? A Q mix allows an artist to hear just what they want in their headphones. And this can be different from the main mix going through the speakers. So let's say you have a vocalist and a guitar player performing at the same time. I'll name QA Zoe for the performer's name, or it could be vocals or whatever you want. I'll name QB Doug Bell hey. or guitar or whatever you prefer. Come to settings and route headphone one to QA and headphone two is QB. I'll name input channel three vocal, so I know that mic 
is on that channel and name channel five and six guitar left and right, or just make it stereo for the microphones plugged into inputs five and six. Of course, set up your input gain either with smart gain or manually and set up the tracks in your DAW. Turn up the output for QA. Zoe wants to hear more of herself, so we'll take that mic You're level up. I wanted, but this couldn't last. Reduce I the guitar a bit. And if you happen to have something playing in the DW, like a click track or drums or other instruments, we can adjust the level that Zoe hears in her headphones with the DAW return. If you click solo, then you can hear that cue mix through your speakers, which might help you set it up. Then flip over to Doug and do the opposite. Lower the voice a bit, raise the guitar, set the drum level. There we go. Now we have two different cue mixes and a master mix for the control room. There's actually a lot more that you can do with cue mixes, and they can also come in handy once you get into using loopback. So be sure to play around with your cue mixes. So what can you do with talkback? Well, you can speak to an artist directly through their headphones, which can really come in handy, especially if they are in another room, like a vocal booth. First, come to your mixer and settings. Go to Talkback, and we need to set the input source. This could be a microphone that you have connected to the Evo 16. In that case, you choose Internal and set the input, or set it to External and use something like a USB microphone, or even the mic in your webcam. So I'll go with External and choose the webcam mic. Then make sure your headphone output is set to a Q mix. All right, you're all set up. Now, when you want to use Talkback, just click the button in the mixer or assign it to the F button. You can also adjust the level of the Talkback going to each Q mix. Hey, all right, so that take wasn't too bad, but the truth is, I got a fever, all right? And the only cure is more cowbell. So let's reset and we'll do it again. The optical I.O. is a great way to expand the Evo 16 to a full 24 in, 24 out audio interface. However, exactly how you set this up will depend on the gear you are connecting. But here's a few steps that will apply to anything you're connecting to the optical I.O. Connect your Toslink cable or cables. Ins go to outs and outs go to ins. And if you need some Toslink cables, I'll put a link in the description for some cables that I use. If you're connecting multiple devices, you'll probably want to use the word clock out. I'll set my digital IO to ADAT in this case. Next, you'll need to match the sample rate for each device. So I'll make sure both of these are at 48K. Then you need to set the master clock. Again, this depends on the external gear that you are using, but in general, one device will be internal and the other will be external. There you go. If you're using the outputs, then you can route them here and set up the inputs in your mixer and the DAW. Same thing for the digital outputs. My guess is that most of you already know how to record a microphone and a guitar. So if you do, 
feel free to go ahead and skip forward to the loop back section. However, if you are brand new and you don't know how to do any of that, we'll cover it here. First, turn down or mute your studio monitors and plug in some headphones. The reason for this is we don't want a live microphone in the same room as our speakers when they're turned up. Otherwise, you'd get a feedback loop because sound would go into the microphone, then come out of the speakers and back into the microphone and then back out of the speakers over and over again. And it makes for a very unpleasant sound. Then connect your XLR cable to your microphone. Connect the other end to one of the inputs on the Evo. We'll use input five. In your DAW, create a mono audio track. Set the input to five in this case. Mute the input and record enable. The reason why we mute the input is so we don't get a doubling effect in our headphones because we're going to hear ourselves with no latency through the Evo mixer. This is a doubling effect. So make sure we mute this input. Ah, much, much better. And now we can hear ourselves with no latency through the Evo mixer. If on the other hand, you wanted to hear a reverb plugin, for example, while you were singing, then you would unmute the track in your DAW and turn down the input in the mixer. You'd also want to lower your buffer to avoid latency. But we don't need to hear any effects while we are recording since we can always add them later. So let's mute the DAW and turn up the mixer. If you are using a condenser microphone or a cloud lifter type device, you'll need to turn on phantom power. This is a condenser microphone, so I'll press channel five and the 48V button. If you're using a dynamic mic, then you don't need to turn that on. Now we need to set our input gain, and for that, we'll use smart gain. Press the smart gain button, press channel five, press the smart gain button again, and then speak or sing into the microphone or play your instrument at a level that represents your performance. All right, now our gain is set to the proper level. Hit record and lay down your track. This is recording a microphone with the Evo 16. Once you're done, you could create another track and record again head into your effects, and of course use any plugins you want on your recorded tracks, and then mix your song. Also, don't be intimidated by all of these steps. If you're brand new, it might seem like a lot to remember, but the reality is, after you do this a couple of times, it becomes second nature, and you'll be setting up your mics and DAW tracks in about 15 seconds. The same thing goes for any other routing that we do in this video. You can also record several mics at the same time, or even six mics, a guitar and bass at the same time. And that's not even counting the optical inputs where you can add another 16 channels. So the Evo 16 really has all of the inputs and outputs that the vast majority of people will ever need. Also, if you happen to need XLR cables, an inexpensive condenser mic, or even the Shure SM7B with a cloud lifter and mic arm, I'll have links for those in the description below. Let's record a guitar. First, connect a quarter inch TS cable to your guitar and input one or two of the Evo. Select the channel and press the instrument button. Create a mono audio track in your DAW, set the input, turn down the buffer in your DAW since we're going to monitor through the DAW, arm the track, 
and turn down the fader in the mixer. Otherwise, you'll get a doubling effect. As you can see, we have the input of the guitar and the output of the guitar from the DAW. So turn this down. Then set the gain. You can use smart gain or set it manually. We'll do it manually. And since this guitar has high output active pickups, it barely needs any gain at all. All right. Throw in your guitar amp plugin and lay down your track. Or you could even throw in a drum virtual instrument and play along with that. Also, if you need guitar or instrument cables, I'll put a link below for the ones that I use. And if you need some audio plugins, head over to bononistudio.com slash deals. And there you'll find the best plugin deals all in one place. Loop back, loop back, loop back. You know, I always say for any audio interface that I review, do not buy an audio interface if it doesn't have loop back. In the modern world that we live in, you are going to need it. So what exactly can you do with it? Well, you can record computer-based audio into your DAW. So things like a video playing in a browser, a media player, or even a Zoom call. Plus, you could record a microphone along with it. And this applies to both Mac and Windows. Now, the other way to use loopback, at least on Windows, is to route your DAW audio out into something like OBS for live streaming or recording a screen capture video for something like, you know, a DAW or plugin tutorial or review. And that's actually how I use loopback for all of the plugin reviews we do here. Now, you can do the same thing on Mac, but it requires an additional app. The core audio system on Mac is just not nearly as flexible as the Windows audio system, at least not yet. But if you are on Mac, I would still highly suggest that you watch the loopback Windows chapter because I go in depth into OBS in that section and all of that stuff will apply to OBS on Mac as well. The only difference will be how we actually route the audio into OBS. So let's go ahead and check out a couple ways that we can use loopback. Let's say we want to record the audio from a video playing in a browser or a media player or a Zoom call or even multiple apps at the same time into our DAW. Whatever it happens to be, the setup will be the same. But keep in mind, loopback is incredibly flexible and you can accomplish the same thing several different ways. For example, you may want to set your computer audio to something other than one and two. And you may want to use a cue mix as your loopback source. So feel free to mess around with this. Also, what we're about to do here applies to both Windows and Mac. First, I'll set my computer playback to Evo 1, 2. Play the video and you see that audio in the mixer. Then I'll set the loopback source to DAW 1, 2. Or we can do it from the tray, same thing. We could also choose master mix or even a Q mix. It really just depends on what you want to do but we'll stick with DAW 1, 2. Then in your DAW, set up a stereo audio track. Select the loopback inputs, and the name may vary between DAWs. Then we'll arm the track and mute it so we don't get a feedback loop. Play the video or start your Zoom call, record, and there you go. If you want to record a microphone at the same time, set up your track the same way you always do. Make sure you mute it, otherwise it will be captured in the loopback track. 
and record both at the same time. Alright, so now we get into the really cool stuff involving streaming or screen recording. As long as you are on Windows, we can use loopback to send our ASIO DAW audio out into something like OBS for screen recording or streaming. And this will include all audio in our DAW. Every input, every track, every plugin, every virtual instrument, etc., etc. For this, you don't need to have your computer sound set to use the Evo 16, but you can if you want. Of course, you'll need to have the Evo 16 set as the playback engine for your DAW. And just like last time, you could set this up several different ways, so feel free to play around with this. First, I'll set my loopback source to DAW 1 and 2. And that's because 1 and 2 are the outputs of our DAW. Open OBS, and if you don't already have one, create a display capture. And by the way, OBS is completely free, and anyone can get it from this site. Then I'll create an audio input capture, name it DAW Audio, and set the source to loopback, which is named ADAT 1516 in this case, and you can see that naming convention in Windows. Click OK, play back your DAW, and there you go. Now, if you're not getting input, go to Settings, Audio, and make sure the sample rate for OBS matches what you have set for the Evo. If you're still not getting input, go to your Windows Sound Settings, and just ensure that the loopback output is set to 48K in this case. And it is. Okay, so now you're good to go. But what if you wanted to record a microphone at the same time? No problem. You could simply create a track in your DAW, use any plugins you want, and that audio from the mic will also be captured on the DAW audio track in OBS. Or maybe you don't want to run the mic through the DAW, and instead you want a separate track in OBS. No problem. I'll create another audio input capture, name it microphone, and choose the input that my mic is plugged into, which in this case is input 3, so I'll choose analog 3-4, then click the gear icon, advanced audio properties, and make sure that track is mono, otherwise people will only hear you on one side. There we go. If I play the DAW, that audio is on the DAW track, and the mic is on its own track. If you want, you can also add filters or plugins to the mic track. Also, if Windows is set to the same Evo 1 2 output, then that audio will also be captured on the DAW audio track. So you might want to mute the desktop audio track so it's not doubled, or you could disable it. Or of course, you can change the output for Windows so it's on its own track. If you're recording and you want each audio source on its own track to edit later, and this is the way I do it when I make plug-in review videos, by the way, click a gear icon, go to Advanced Audio Properties, and make sure each source is set to a single track. Then come to Settings, Output, Advanced, Recording, and make sure you check each track that you want to record. 
Then you'll get a video file with separate audio tracks that you can edit later. Now, if you're streaming, you can only output a single stereo source. So come back to advanced audio properties and make sure each source is on the same track. Or maybe you want to stream and record at the same time. No problem. I'll keep my three tracks checked here under recording. You may also want to add track four. You'll see why in a minute. So you can record the streamed audio, but that's of course optional. Then under streaming, I'll change the track we're going to stream with to four. Apply that. Then come back to advanced audio properties. Set up my sources to record two separate tracks. And then send them all out of four for the stream audio. There you go. And by the way, you can also set up your audio tracks in settings, audio, and under the global audio devices. This is useful if you have a lot of scenes and you don't want to copy over your sources. But I like to create my sources myself so I can give them specific names when they are created instead of having to rename things later on. If you want to add a webcam, just create a video capture device, name it webcam, choose the webcam from the drop down, put it wherever you want. There you go. If you happen to be using a green screen, you can also apply a filter and select chroma key. All right, so that's how you can use loopback with the Evo 16 to send your DAW audio into OBS, Streamlabs, Melon, Zoom, Google Meet, and similar apps. It's a great way to live stream, have an online concert, podcast, gaming, Twitch, teach music online, teach guitar or piano online, record plug-in review videos, and about a million other things. So. If you're trying to decide between several different audio interfaces, whichever one you choose, make certain it has loopback. You are going to need it. Now, loopback works a bit different on Mac. Of course, you can easily record computer audio into your DAW, as we've already shown. But if you want to send DAW audio out into something like OBS, Google Meet, etc., then we'll need to use an extra app because core audio just isn't as flexible as the Windows audio system is, at least for this. So here's a few ways that you can do this on Mac. You can try the free black hole driver, come to audio MIDI setup, create a multi output device, select black hole and the Evo 16. Set your DAW to the multi-output device. You can also set your Mac to the multi-output if you want system sounds. In OBS, set the input for your DAW track to black hole. If you don't know how to create that DAW track, by the way, go back to the Windows section and just watch that first. Then play your DAW, and there you go. Another option, which I don't really recommend, but it is possible, is to unplug your monitors from output one and two, connect TRS cables to output one and two, and run them into inputs one and two, and it has to be one and two for Mac. Press the one and two buttons at the same time to link them. Start with the gain all the way down. Set your DAW to use the Evo 16. Set the DAW track in OBS to the Evo 16. Make sure you turn down the input one and two track in the mixer, play your DAW, and there you go.
you could also record a mic into the DAW track. But a much better way to do this is with a paid app. Something like Ground Control Room, Ground Control Caster, or Rogue Amoeba Loopback. With Ground Control Room, for example, you have many different ways you could set this up. You could set the input of a slot to Loopback from the Evo, then set the output to Ground Control Room or another virtual cable. And in OBS, select the Ground Control Room source. And there you go. And we didn't even have to switch the playback engine of our DAW. It's still set to the Evo 16. So we can use all of the inputs and outputs of our interface, just like we can in Windows. And you can set your loopback source to anything you want in the mixer. If you were using Rogue Amoeba loopback, then you also have many different ways to set this up. For example, on the loopback audio device, I'll add the Evo 16 source, connect 23 and 24, which are the Evo loopback channels. Our DAW is still set to use the Evo 16. In OBS, set the DAW audio source to loopback audio. Play your DAW, and there you go. You could also create a new virtual device name it microphone, add the Evo 16, delete these cables. And I have a microphone plugged into input three of the Evo 16. So I'll connect channel three to both sides of the output, or I could just switch it to mono in OBS. Come back to OBS, create an audio input capture, name it microphone, and set the source to the microphone device we created in Rogue Amoeba Loopback. And now we have separate tracks for our mic and our DAW audio. Of course, make sure your microphone is not feeding into your Loopback track which is why I have the loopback source set to Mac 1 and 2. If I changed that to Master Mix, then the mic would feed into the DAW track in OBS, which I don't want in this case. All right, there you go. Now you can use loopback on Mac the same way we use it on Windows. And if you're going to be live streaming or creating a lot of plugin or DAW review videos on your Mac, I would highly suggest you simply purchase an app. It makes things a whole lot easier. Another app you might want to consider if you are recording a lot of screen capture videos or live streaming with a MacBook is Switch Res X or Quick Res. I personally use Switch Res X. And this allows me to change my aspect ratio to 16 by 9 instead of the standard 16 by 10. Also, if you need a video editor to edit all of those screen recorded clips, then check out DaVinci Resolve, which is completely free. And it works on both Windows and Mac. It's also what I personally use. The Evo 16 has two independent headphone outputs, but perhaps you need to add more. In that case, you can connect an external headphone amp, and the Evo 16 has plenty of outputs for us to use. Now, the exact way that you hook this up will depend on the headphone amp that you have. Some of the smaller ones, for example, only have a direct input. And for those, you would connect a single TRS cable to a headphone output on the Evo, then connect it to the direct in on the headphone amp, 
set up the source for your headphone output in routing. Make sure you turn up the output. And there you go. If instead your headphone amp has a left and right input, then you would connect quarter inch TRS cables to let's say outputs seven and eight on the Evo, run them into the headphone amp. And by the way, if you need some quarter inch TRS cables, I'll put a link in the description below to the exact cables I'm using here. These are from Monoprice and they'll run you about $15 for 15 foot. These are Hosa Pro and they'll run you about $19 for 15 foot. And these are monster cables that I have connected to my main studio monitors. And these will run you about $100 each if you can even find them anymore. But the truth is, I don't really hear a difference between any of these cables. And I actually prefer the gauge and the jacket of the mono price. Okay, so we have our TRS cables connected to outputs seven and eight of the Evo and to the inputs of the headphone amp. Then I could set the routing of seven and eight to main mix, but then the level going into the headphone amp will be affected by the main volume. And I don't want that, and you probably don't either. So maybe use a Q mix. You could even name it headphone amp. Make sure I pull up the DAW12 channel, which is the output my DAW is set to. And then the speaker volume is separate from the headphone amp. Or you could set seven and eight to DAW through. Then set up a headphone bus in your DAW or even change the main out to seven and eight. Pull up seven and eight in the master mix so we can hear it through our speakers. Or if you are using a headphone bus, then you can leave the main out set to one and two and set the headphone bus to seven and eight. Then make sure you turn down the seven eight doll return in the main mix so you don't get doubling through your speakers. And the level of our main speakers and the alt is separate from the doll through being fed into our headphone amp. The Evo 16 really sets a new standard for features versus price. With its eight inputs, eight outputs, two optical inputs and outputs, two headphone outputs, smart gain, the motion UI screen, talk back, alt speaker, loop back, and the flexible routing in the mixer, you'll really be hard pressed to find anything else in this price range with the same amount of features. So head over to evo.audio to read more about it, watch some more videos, and decide if this is the audio interface for you. So that is everything you want to know about the Evo 16.